Welcome to Psychiatry Education Forum Academy's updates. So I am Dr. Harbinder Singh. So this medication, Brixati, was just approved by FDA for opioid use disorder. So this is a new long-acting buprenorphine formulation. Uh, so this will be likely a second one, right? The first one was approved in 2017, sublocate. So Brixati will be a next long-acting buprenorphine formulation. And uh, I will be discussing this medication option in these sections. But before we move forward, very briefly, I want to emphasize I have no disclosures or financial ties with uh, this company or any other pharmaceutical company for that matter. This is all for educational purposes only. So without wasting any time, we will start with the indication. Um, as I just mentioned, uh, this is uh, currently approved for moderate to severe opioid use disorders, mainly in patients um, who have initiated treatment with either a single dose of the transmucosal buprenorphine product or for patients who are already being treated with buprenorphine. But one thing they emphasize is that uh, this should be used as a part of a complete treatment plan that includes counseling and psychosocial support. So medications alone should not be an option. And um, we all know, right, about buprenorphine. So I will not go into details in terms of mechanism of action. But we know that buprenorphine is a partial agonist at mu opioid receptor and antagonist at kappa opioid receptor. Well, buprenorphine is well known, approved for opioid use disorder, but this will be, a, this is really interesting because I will talk about that in a minute. And actually I will answer that in our next section, which is how to dose uh, this treatment option. So Brixati is actually available um, in two formulations. Um, one is a weekly injection and the second is monthly injections. And these are the available dose forms for this. So the weekly injections are available in 8 milligrams, 16, 24, and 32. And the monthly are available in 64, 96, and 128. Now, the important clinical fact is... When you give weekly injections, you, should, you cannot combine them to make a monthly dose. That's very different. We'll talk about converting weekly to monthly in a minute, in a few minutes. But this is really important. You can't just add and make it a monthly by using the weekly dosing. And the second fact is you should give this as a single injection. Do not divide. Now, the important uh, recommendation on top is um, you, it's a subcutaneous injection, but you should never, you should never give this intravenous, intramuscular, or intradermal. The reason is um, it can cause serious harm or even death if this is given intravenously because uh, Brixati forms a liquid uh, crystalline gel. Uh, when it comes in contact with body fluids, and that can cause a occlusion, uh, local tissue damage, and those thromboembolic events. Thereby, uh, you should definitely pay attention to this. No intravenous administration. This is only subcutaneous. And there are many other recommendations given if you read more details on this that only healthcare providers should prepare and give this treatment option. Uh, but I'll talk about all that. So as we are talking about the, you know, route of administration, let's talk about the injection site for a minute. Like where should we give it? So first, it's a sub Q, right? It's a subcutaneous and you should give it very slowly. And these are the uh, injection site recommended. So this picture I took from the package insert, I have put the reference below. 
So the major sites are the subcutaneous tissue of the buttock, thigh area, abdomen, and upper arms. And uh, when you give the weekly injection, you should never give at same dose for at least, uh, sorry, same site for at least eight weeks. But for the monthly injection, there is no need for this injection site rotation. Now, the other interesting fact is that when you give the injection in the arm side, that is associated with almost 10% lower plasma level than the other sites. Now, there is another fact when I was reading the you know, instructions for this medication, uh, latex allergy is specifically mentioned there because the packaging of this product contain a natural rubber latex which may cause allergic reaction. So you need to check for latest latex allergy in your patients. Now, moving on to the next one, uh, like continuing the fact on how to dose it. So first we will talk about this in patients who are not currently on a buprenorphine treatment. And then I will talk about for somebody who is already on buprenorphine, how to convert that. But let's talk about somebody who comes and is not on the treatment. You cannot start, you know, uh, like that. You will place the person at risk of uh, withdrawal and other symptoms. So first, let me show you this one week mark because the first week is the most important one in dosing. Because first week you give those, um, you know, dosing. Uh, but let's talk about that now. First you need to give them this transmucosal buprenorphine 4 milligram. This is mainly a test dose to monitor for opioid withdrawal. So to avoid precipitating that opioid withdrawal syndrome, you need to test this, right? And look for any objective signs of mild to moderate withdrawal. And if there is no withdrawal, that means the, do the transmucosal buprenorphine is tolerated without any precipitated withdrawal, that is the time you give the first dose of that weekly Brixati at 16 milligram. And then within three days of this first dose, within three days, this is really important, within three days, we are still in that first week time. So you give the first 16 milligram Brixati and within three days of that, you can give an additional dose of eight milligram to achieve that recommended 24 milligram weekly dosage. But if needed, um, during this first week of treatment, if you wanna give additional dosing, you need to wait for at least 24 hour after that last dose of Brixati and you can give additional eight milligram if needed. And uh, that will reach um, the total 32 milligram dose in first week. So remember, this is still in first week. And you will say, why will 32 milligram be needed? And we'll talk about that in a minute. It's mainly, and this is my understanding, that when you're converting somebody from the buprenorphine, you may need 32 milligram dosage in first week. It all depends on the dose of buprenorphine, like where you are converting that. I will talk about that in next slides, how to convert that. But this is a first week, right? Testing dose and then giving the first 16 milligram, within three days you add additional eight, but if you need to go more, um, wait at least 24 hour after that and give one more dose of that. Now, you have done one week, then the subsequent weekly injections are dependent on what dose you reached by week one, and then you can adjust the dose on a weekly basis depending on how the per patient is doing. The maximum weekly dose is 32 here. Now, you must be you must have realized by now that we are talking about weekly Brixati. Monthly Brixati is not intended for patients who are not receiving buprenorphine treatment, right? So you need to start with weekly uh, Brixati dosing here. Now, so this was first, right? Now, how do you switch? from a transmucosal buprenorphine to Brixati. Somebody's on it, how will you switch them to Brixati? So first, 
let me, uh, I will use these diagrams here. On left side is transmucosal buprenorphine, and these are the weekly and monthly conversion of dose. Now, before I talk about the dosing conversion, I just want to emphasize that you can switch them directly to either weekly or monthly. So you can choose the one based on your preference patient profile. So for example, if somebody is on six milligram or less than six milligram of buprenorphine, you will only switch them to weekly eight milligram of Brixati. You can't convert that low dose of buprenorphine to monthly yet. But if somebody is on eight to 10 milligram of transmucosal buprenorphine, you can switch them to either 16 of a weekly Brixati or 64 of monthly Brixati. And uh, for 12 to 16 milligram of transmucosal buprenorphine, you can jump to 24 milligram of weekly Brixati or 96 milligram of monthly Brixati. And the last is 18 to 24 milligram of transmucosal mucosal buprenorphine can be converted to either 32 milligram of weekly Brixati or 128 milligram of monthly Brixati. So this was very straightforward conversion from the transmucosal to the injectable form. Now in the next section, we'll talk about how to switch them between weekly and the monthly Brixati. So patients can be transitioned from weekly to monthly or monthly to weekly based on your clinical judgment. And this is a very basic overview of that. Like 16 of weekly Brixati is equal to 64 of monthly. 24 weekly is equal to 96 milligram monthly. And 32 milligram weekly is equal to 128 milligram monthly. So I think this will really help um, um, in your clinical decision making. And one thing I want to emphasize is uh, if a patient who misses a dose of Brixati, you should, uh, they should receive the next dose as soon as possible. Now, these weekly are mostly given in a seven days interval and the monthly are given uh, in 28 day interval. And I should have actually created a slide for this, but this is really important. You know, it's seven days for weekly and one month for monthly, but you can even do plus minus days. Like for weekly, there is plus minus two days, like two days before or two days after that weekly time point. And for monthly, it's plus minus one week before and after that one month mark for, for all the monthly injection. So be very mindful of that. Now, Let's spend some time on the discontinuation of Brixati. Like if Brixati is discontinued, you should consider the extended release characteristic of this medication because it all depends on, you know, how long the person patient was on this medication for. So you need to know how long it takes for the medication to reach study state first. So let's talk about that. That will help us decide, you know, um, how long you need to keep an eye on for these withdrawal symptoms when we discontinue Brixati. So for weekly and monthly injections, study state is reached like this. Four weeks for weekly uh, injections and four months for the monthly injections. And after Brixati is discontinued, um, you can have detectable plasma levels for like one month for weekly and four months for the monthly injection. So you need to keep an eye on, you know, signs and symptoms of withdrawal for this much duration and treat those accordingly. So very, very clinically relevant fact here. Now, we are done with the dosing. Now let's talk about uh, use in special population. I will not spend much time, but very briefly, I think the most important thing is use with the hepatic impairment. It's actually uh, not recommended for moderate to severe hepatic impairment because um, we all know this medication is breaking down in the in the in the liver, and uh, you know. Uh, 
if there is hepatic impairment, there is risk of higher plasma level and longer half-life of buprenorphine, thereby causing more side effects. So they have very strongly recommended to not use Brixaldi uh, in moderate to severe hepatic impairment, but there was no dosage adjustment for renal impairment. And then um, I also want to, I didn't actually write this down, but uh, they also did mention about the QTC prolongation. The risk is not significant. Uh, there was there were no torsades uh, seen in the study population or even even in prior studies, so comparatively safer there. And then with breast uh, pregnancy and breastfeeding, um, I will talk about pregnancy in few minutes. There is this caution and risk of neonatal opioid withdrawal syndrome if a mother is using opioids during pregnancy. Right, very well known fact. And with breastfeeding also, now this is very difficult decision, right? Depending on if the mother needed that during pregnancy or breast uh, during breastfeeding time. But the data have shown that it does passes into mother's milk. So you need to keep the de developmental and health benefit of breastfeeding versus the risk to the uh, baby. Uh, but uh, if this is given, you need to monitor infant for drowsiness and breathing difficulty and many more. So be very cautious of that. But the liver is very important. And I'll talk about a little bit more about liver in a minute also. But um, let's see what common side effects were seen in the studies for this one. Well, because this is an injection, so injection site pain, arrhythmia, and pruritus were seen commonly. And then GI side effects ranging from constipation to nausea. And then headaches were seen and UTIs also. I don't know if there is a direct correlation. I highly doubt maybe, but it was seen as one of the common side effect. Uh, but there are certain warnings and precautions we need to be mindful of. And these uh, ranges from, as we all know, there is a risk of addiction and abuse uh, with this product. That's why this is a controlled one. And this can be abused in a similar manner to opioids. So you need to monitor patients for condition, indicating of diversion or progression to opioid dependency or addictive behaviors. And uh, on the same note, you know, you need to keep an eye on risk of withdrawal in patients who are dependent on full agonist opioids when you start this. There can be, um, you know, many other symptoms that can come with that. Like it's a really big topic. There is a risk of opioid withdrawal with abrupt discontinuation also. So the warning is very, very high on this. Now there are, actually they also mentioned the importance of recommending naloxone for the emergency treatment of opioid overdoses in these uh, patients when you prescribe these. And uh, the other warnings are obviously risk of respiratory depression, like even life-threatening respiratory depression and deaths have occurred in patients with uh, using buprenorphine. So you need to warn patients of this potential dangers, especially when you use them with other depressants, including benzodiazepines. I'll talk about that in a minute as well. And then uh, adrenal insufficiency. Uh, it's really important to stay mindful of that uh, seen with uh, opioid use as well. But if this is diagnosed, you need to treat with the replacement of steroids and wean the patients off opioid slowly. And then hepatitis. You know, we talked about um, um, not recommended in moderate to severe hepatic impairment, but there is a risk of hepatitis and hepatic even. So you need to monitor liver enzyme before and during the treatment. And then we talked about the neonatal opioid withdrawal uh, syndrome. Uh, this is an expected but treatable outcome of prolonged use of opioids during pregnancy. Now, we will switch gears and talk briefly about the drug interactions with Brixati. Uh, so cytochrome P453F4 is the main enzyme that breaks this medication down into active products. So obviously, if you are using cytochrome P4, 3A4 inhibitors, 
like ketoconazole, erythromycin, protease inhibitors. It will raise the plasma concentration of buprenorphine, thereby increasing or prolonging the opioid effects, right? Very, uh, um, it makes sense. And the same applies for three or four inducers like rifampin, carbamazepine, phenytoin, phenobarbital. They will reduce the plasma concentration of buprenorphine, thereby reducing the efficacy or even may uh, cause the development of abstinence syndrome. And then other drug interactions include serotonergic agents like almost uh, antidepressant with serotonergic property. Uh, there is a risk of serotonin syndrome with this. Be mindful of that. And then with benzodiazepine or CNS depressant, we just talked about the risk of respiratory depression, profound sedation, coma, and even death. So ideally avoid these medications with this. And then diuretics. This is really interesting. Uh, the efficacy of diuretics can be reduced with Brixaldi because this induces the release of antidiuretic hormone. And then last is with anticholinergic agent. The additive effect can cause these anticholinergic effects like urinary retention, um, even severe constipation or paralytic ileus. So be cautious of that. Ask for these symptoms in the follow-up visits if somebody's on these. Now, we will go to the last section here, which is the REMS program is needed with Brixali. So you need to actually, this is a requirement. You need to comply with this, uh, just like clozapine, right? Clozapine have the REMS a program, same way this will have a REMS program. Um, so Brixaldi will be only available through this restricted program because of this uh, serious risk of harm or death that can result from uh, intravenous uh, self-administration. So they don't want to give this to patients. This can only be given by a healthcare professional right now. So the main goal is to reduce the serious harm and risk of death to the patients. But there are many, there are three main requirements for the REMS program. Now, the first requirement is certification. The healthcare settings and the pharmacies that will order and dispense this must be certified in this REMS program. That's number one. And number two is it can only be dispensed by the healthcare providers. So the, you know, these uh, healthcare settings and pharmacies must establish a process and procedures to verify that this is going directly to healthcare providers and this cannot be dispensed to a patient directly. And the last is these settings and pharmacies cannot, they cannot distribute, transfer, give a loan or sell Brixaldi. And you can read more about this. The website is here, brixaldirems.com. But friends, this was a very brief overview of this newly approved uh, first and only long-acting buprenorphine formulation for opioid use disorders. I hope this was helpful. Um, I will request if you're interested in learning more and you are a healthcare professional, please consider joining our academy membership. You can find all that on psychiatryeducationforum.com. This is Dr. Harbinder Singh signing off now. You all take care and bye for now. Thank you.